We showed you guys how to buy white booze before, and now we're going to show you how to buy brown booze. Uh, no, I think they prefer the term booze of color. What's up, guys? It is me, Noah Gluten, here with my trusty producer sidekick, T. And over here, we have somebody you should know by now because we've done a lot of episodes with her. This is Nikki Sanseri. If you guys missed part one where we talked about a little tequila, a little vodka, a little gin, click these bottles, and then you can learn about those bottles and learn how to buy all that stuff the right way. But today, we're talking about brown boobs. I mean, booze. Nailed it. I love both brown booze and brown boobs. Well, this is going to be a great day for you because we've got both here. So, brown spirits or brown booze is anything that's aged, actually and aged in wood. All right, so we're focusing on American whiskeys today because uh, Nikki, who pretty much knows all there is to know about drinking and hooch, uh, she says there's just like way too much to cover if we go international with whiskeys today, yes. and I believe her. There are a lot of different kind of whiskeys, but I thought it'd be nice to actually go over what we've contributed to the world. What we have here is we have a bourbon and rye. The bourbon needs to be 51% corn, and then you can add whatever else you want, whether it be wheat or rye. And the rye needs to be 51% rye. And you can add corn or wheat or barley. Bourbon, of course, is invented by Murphy Brown star Candace Bourbon. Uh, I don't it's think per, that's accurate. I, I don't think that's even how you pronounce the name. Bourbon is from, usually in most cases, from Bourbon County, Kentucky. Um, there's a lot of other bourbons out there that you can create outside of Bourbon County, but... Sounds like the best county in the world, by the way. It, it I want to live is. there. It is going to have the characteristics of breakfast cereal. That's what America... That's great, because I actually have it for breakfast every morning. This is Blanton's first. Blanton's is from a distillery called Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace actually makes most of the bourbon that we see out there. I know you guys have seen the bottle, but they make all different kinds because depending on where you put the bourbon barrel in the Rick House, the Rick House is where they store the bourbon barrels, if you put it up high, it may come off really spicy. If you put it down low and it's cooler, it actually might turn out a little bit more malty and um, sugary than the one at the top. So it's, it's really interesting how this all comes about. When you're picking bourbon, that's what single barrel means. Single barrel means they took it from that one barrel in the Rick House and just put it in the bottle for you. Which is kind of cool, yeah. because they're all different. Yeah, so you don't have all different bourbon 69ing with each other from all different barrels. Yeah, exactly, that's what they do. This one runs you about $50 for this guy, okay. which is a really, really great gift. It comes with a metal top um, that has a little horse on it. And it looks like a little Monopoly piece, kind of. Yeah, it is, there's seven different ones. You can collect them, actually. <laughs> if you're a Maker's Mark drinker, this is actually probably something for you that you'd want to move into. Um, when you research... I want to move into that bottle. <laughs> I'm like a genie that lives inside of a bottle of bourbon. And I don't grant any wishes, and I'm just... Drunk. And you're just grouchy <laughs> and, and forget everything. And then have mood swings and then cry. <laughs> You know me way better than you think you do. So you guys will probably remember that Nikki actually showed us how to make butternut squash bourbon mm -hmm. on a past episode of Feeder, and if you didn't, click this bottle of bourbon right now. And for that one, you used Eagle Rare, I remember, which Eagle is sort of a more mid-range, uh, you know, yeah. less gifty and fancy, but well, still very delicious. Well, it is gifty. The thing with Eagle Rare that's kind of great, and what you can research, if you're looking to make a mixed drink with a bottle of bourbon, Sometimes you want to just leave these alone. You don't want to mix them. They're going to fight with everything in the glass. So what you want to do is you want to get some a bourbon that has a high rye content. Eagle Rare has a high rye content. Mm. So what happens is that it then plays well with others in your glass. So this is Few. Um, it's from Pennsylvania. It was one of the last dry counties. And just to kind of stick it to them, they put a distillery in it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of why I love this company. So it's more of a spite distillery? It's a spite, it's a big middle finger distillery. I can get behind that. Yeah. Rye tends to, when you drink it, do something really, really great on your palate. It sends little pin needle prickles all throughout your tongue and then all the way down here and in the best way possible. It tingles. So it's like acupuncture for your face mouth. Yes, exactly. Rye is another really beautiful gift. It's hard to 
create rye. Rye is a really difficult thing to distill. Hmm. Um, I'm not gonna go into why, but it is very difficult. So ryes tend to be a little bit more expensive. So you're looking about retail about $55 or so, 55 to $60 for this guy. We can't afford that on Tasted. No. And again, if they put a lot of effort into your bottle, you can see these are actually pretty special looking. They're, they're pretty gorgeous. Then why don't you just purchase it, try it, and see how you feel. Um, you also can go to a bar and just purchase a shot of it somewhere, and then it's kind of like a sample that you pay Perhaps for. Perhaps at a place that might be called Little Doms, for yeah. example. And you have a few, and you see if you like it, and then you wake up in someone's apartment, you don't know who they are, and you sneak out before they wake up. Every well, you're week. such a gentleman. No, you're not. Well, I don't want to wake him up, that'd be rude. Him? Wow, okay. No, it's coming them, up. I said but no, you, I mean, you a said... lot happens. <laughs> This is what regret sounds like, by the way. This conversation right here. <laughs> and as you always say, buttholes don't have a gender. They don't. <laughs> Isn't that what you always say? No, they don't have an agenda. <laughs> don't get flavored rum. Step one, unflavored. Can it unflavored. be spiced? Is yes. that okay? Spiced is okay. Now, here, here's a little thing about spiced rum. Captain Morgan actually has the market cornered. I don't know if they have a monopoly on it or what's going on. There are a few different ones out there, but they have a lot of sugar in them. And then you add Coke to it, usually, for your Cuba Libre, if you will. Mm. And, uh... That has a I'm getting lime nauseous too, just yeah, thinking about lime. this. You're just adding a bunch of sugar into your booze. You're not gonna feel good. The whole point of booze, well, not the whole point, but part of the point, at least half of it, is to feel good when you drink it. Mm -hmm. You don't feel good when you or have a little Or at least to get back to feeling normal. That's how I use it. And to suppress your childhood. I have a company here that's actually uh, it's from Green Bar. It's in downtown LA. They distill it here. Really, really gorgeous because they don't add any sugar to it. So it just tastes like rum and spices. There's not a ton of regulations on it. It uh, it needs to be made from sugar cane though. That's that's which kind is why of you it. probably don't need additional sugar added to it. No, it'll have no. its own natural sweetness. So with rum, it's it's the wild west. It's you can kind of distill it however you feel like it. Uh, there there's a few different styles that you'll come across. So there's a French style, a Spanish style, and a British style. So your British style is gonna have this really gunpowdery, funky, and in the best way possible, I know this sounds gross, hot garbage <laughs> taste to it. <laughs> it's supposed to be really funky, really flavorful. It's supposed to have this sort of burnt shoe leather, really great molasses, wheat, toasted oats, and uh, I don't know, dried fruits like figs and plums. It's supposed to have all these really great characteristics and it's supposed to keep changing as you drink your drink. The next one what we have here is um, a Spanish style. It's uh, Dos Maderos, uh, Pedro Jimenez. That means it's aged in Pedro Jimenez casks. This is uh, aged for five years in the Caribbean and the next five years it's aged in Spain. Usually the characteristic of a Spanish style rum is that it'll taste um, kind of like port. Hmm. So it has a lot of wine qualities to it. It's actually a really beautiful gift and you drink these neat by the way. Well thanks so much Nikki for coming in again and teaching us all these valuable, valuable lessons. I can't wait to watch the show and find out what they were. I think the main takeaways are number one, again, glass. Bottles, always. <laughs> so when it comes to spice rums, don't pick one that has a crap ton of sugar in it. Don't buy flavored rums. Actually, don't really buy flavored anything. How about that? No flavors. But then what would we do on why would you drink that? That's it for us, guys. I'm Noah Galutin. This is Nikki. This is T. Subscribe to Tasted. Uh, we, we talk about booze and food and stuff. It's pretty good. You should check it out. Yeah, yeah. you'll learn something. Well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Subscribe. Ha, ha, ha.